tell I me. A juicy answer to it. Okay. okay. So tell me what was the most surprising thing you've ever learned in your scientific life? Wow. The the most surprising thing. Okay, you ready? Yeah. It's that humans and mushrooms. Thank you for watching. <laughs> you told that. Okay, okay. That the common ancestor between humans and mushrooms. And check out these. Okay. Let me say that differently. Humans, the branch that led to humans, split from the branch that led to mushrooms later in the tree of life then that common ancestor split from what became green plants what it means is humans and mushrooms are more genetically related to each other than either humans or mushrooms are related to green plants that I'm still stupefied by that fact so that's the most surprising. For me, yeah, outside of my field, yeah. That was like, whoa. But there are other ones like, oh my gosh, we have black holes in this universe. And the universe is not only expanding, it's accelerating. And we, there was a big bang, and there might be a multiverse. And we might be in a simulation. All that's still yeah, yeah, yeah. messing with your head as well. But I, I, so my example came from outside my field. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, no, no, not, not only that, okay. You, 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 um, you know, we have very high DNA in common with chimpanzees, like 99 percent. But add to that, we have 50 percent DNA in common with a banana. What? <laughs> and here's how you can become empowered to take this newfound insight and do something about the problems that we have created for ourselves. Some problems the universe has created for us, like the sun will one day burn out, an asteroid might come down. So it's not just problems we have brought upon ourselves, there are other problems as well, and the solutions to all of them are innovations in science and technology, and in engineering, and Cosmos is a way for you to get access to that, it's a way to, to bring you to a level of sensitivity to the power that this literacy can bring to you so that as we go forward you will know how to protect civilization that's what I mean by becoming better shepherds you don't you the next generation should not be embarrassed by what we did to this earth you want them to be proud to say look what my look what my parents did look at how much better my world is than the one they lived in because they set things in motion because they had the, not only the knowledge but they had the wisdom to know what to do with it. What do you think about Beetlejuice? No, no, Beetlejuice, oh my gosh, I, it, I'm so sad. It is weird. Here's a star that for my life was the sixth brightest star in the sky and in the last six months yeah this star's around for 10 million years in the last six months it has dimmed mm -hmm. it is dimmed by more than half of its brightness it's now not even in the top 20 right and it's one of the stars that we feel very sure will one day explode as a supernova and if it does it, no in the next hundred thousand years mm -hmm. but that could be tomorrow tomorrow counts as within the next hundred thousand yeah, years yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is behaving in ways that no one predicted and no one understands we have great seats now 600 million light years well, away. <laughs> we great seats uh, it'll be bright bright enough to see in the daytime as bright as like a half moon almost a full moon so yeah we will all get to see it we're safe from it we're at a safe distance but if it blows uh, that'll be the story of the decade Maybe so, the story of the century. Well, I hope that this new season of Cosmos is worthy of the original, which is a flame that burns in every country on Earth. This dream of a world in which our science and high technology is used with wisdom and foresight but with the soaring joy of exploring the cosmos and the worlds, the possible worlds that we've begun to discover, as well as the worlds within us and the worlds of the past, the lost worlds. That was the original cosmos. It was my honor to write it with Carl Sagan and Stephen Soder. And now it's been my joy to do two additional seasons. And I carry the inspiration of Carl kind of in my heart with every beat. Know. 
I can tell. So we'll start with Jason. How was yeah. it like being executive producer of something so huge? I felt it was really close up. And I really felt, no. I felt. I might use that. I, I felt being an executive producer on Cosmos was one of the great opportunities in my career. I've mostly worked in film. I've done a lot of narrative storytelling. What I mean is telling stories that are fictional, science fiction, action movies, kids movies, family movies. But this was an opportunity to apply all of those skills that the filmmaking community has to telling stories of things that are true. Okay, so Miles, how did you deal with all this with your dad doing all this stuff? Oh, it's great, man. I got to go to Spain. That was really fun. Um, I love it. It's uh, He's at the forefront of something that everybody in my generation really appreciates and something I appreciate myself. Um, but you know, it's it's cool. I'm a fan before anything, and he's making me say that. So, yeah. I saw money change hands. I don't know. Well, money changes hand every day. Don't worry, <laughs> and it's only going in one direction. No, but I, I do want to say that for him, for me, he's an inspiration. I get to see this generation, and I get to see young people that are curious, and I get to see young people who don't agree necessarily with what their leadership is telling them. And it gives me hope because I see smart people who are going to change things. So if I can put the story out there in a way or I can contribute to the story that somebody like Andrean or Neil deGrasse Tyson or Carl Sagan started, I feel a powerful opportunity to leave something that's important, move it, move the needle a little bit. And it's not the same as, you know, my plastic water bottle that ends up in a waterway. I, I think that's the other thing I can leave. So think about that. You got to also make up for all of that. You got to try to change uh, this, this, the, the world because this may be the best place we could ever be as a species and we're the dominant species and we can make a difference. Okay, we're here with Jeffrey. You were the special effects supervisor. Visual effects supervisor. Visual effects. How was that? It was the most exciting, challenging thing I've ever done in my life and a dream come true. Well, what's your background? How did you get into that? Thank you. That's a complicated question. When I was a little kid, I had an I had an aunt that would wake me up for every launch, and we got deep into science and space. And I would hitchhike down to JPL and get publicity photos of rockets and planets and whatever it is. And so I became a huge space freak, I like to say, a NASA freak. And so when the original Cosmos came on, I ignited because Carl Sagan and and Andrianne were talking to me in a language I could understand. And then it was about how do I get there and I realized that at some point having f got a D in physics in high school that wasn't going to be where I was going to go. So I was a magician and magic led to editing. Editing and magic led to oh I can do visual tricks with George Melee kind of things. That led me back to science to go well now I can represent everything that's crazy that's going in my head and check it out and this show has let me interact with uh, physicists and scientists and 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 yeah. test all my theories and debate them and we're to the wise never debate with Neil um, but <laughs> it was just literally it was mind expanding so that's why I say it's an honor it's a challenge and every day I would wake up it thrilled and excited ever since being a part of Cosmos part of this project I it has opened my eyes to you know other like National Geographic shows and just it's just the earth that we live on is so amazing and the possibility that there are other worlds out there and other life form out there that's that's insane <laughs> yeah that's insane so tell my audience what did you do on Cosmos so I actually one of the actress on there um, I have an important role. I'm not sure how much I can say, but there's secrets. I don't. There's secrets. Shh. No, I mean I'm just I'm. Uh, you'll see my face sprinkled in there somewhere. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm glad that I was brought on to this project to bring it to life by Andrew and so it's awesome. <laughs>